that gives her that kind of relaxation in gospel is, is that she's not trying to take anybody's place. James Welcome Cleveland, to Hollywood Whispers. James Cleveland. The ruler of gospel was praised for his radiant music and four Grammy grants. Yet after his passing, stunning disclosures cast a dim shadow over his inheritance. His child Christopher Harris uncovered upsetting insights that shook the gospel local area. What stowed away activities procured Cleveland the title of the most ridiculously malicious man in the gospel. Yet before we get into the chilling disclosures about James Cleveland, we really want to comprehend the early occasions that molded his life and vocation. James Cleveland was brought into the world on December 5, 1931, in the core of Chicago, a city overflowing with gospel music. His folks, diligent and profoundly strict, brought him up in a climate where confidence and music were entwined. His grandma, a sincere lady, assumed an urgent part in his childhood. She acquainted youthful James with the Traveler Baptist Church, a spot that would become vital to his life and vocation. From a youthful age, James showed a characteristic ability for music. At only eight years of age, he made his performance debut with the Congregational Ensemble, having an effect on every individual who heard him. The Congregation's Ensemble Chief, Thomas, a Dorsey known as the Dad of Gospel Music, encouraged James Dorsey's direction and mentorship, which were essential in molding the future gospel legend. James's initial years were loaded up with music and motivation he venerated. Roberta Martin is an unmistakable gospel artist and piano player who additionally performed at Pioneer Baptist Church. Martin's impact was significant, and it was her gathering the Roberta Martin vocalists that previously helped shape James's special style, enlivened by Martin Youthful. James started to form his own music, an expertise that would later characterize his profession. Life was generally difficult for James growing up during the economic crisis of the early 20s. It implied that cash was tight and extravagances were not many. His family couldn't bear the cost of a piano, so James did the following best thing. He rehearsed on the window ledge involving the fisher and wedges as fanciful keys. He frequently related how he would play on these shoddy keys, longing for the day when he could perform on a genuine piano in spite of these difficulties. James's devotion never faltered when he was in secondary school. His folks figured out how to figure out sufficient cash to purchase him an upstanding piano. This was a defining moment. James rehearsed vigorously improving his abilities and fostering a style that mixed customary gospel with jazz's persuasions. His ability was certain, and it wasn't some time before he started standing out as a young person. James joined a neighborhood gospel bunch called the Thistle Gospel Crusaders. It was here that his ability as a writer began to sparkle. The gathering started highlighting his syntheses, and his work immediately grabbed the eye of unmistakable figures in the gospel music. Local Area 1 of his initial pieces, Elegance is Appropriate, performed at a Baptist show in 1948 was a huge achievement. This presentation Perance drove Roberto Martin to begin distributing his work, denoting the start of his expert profession. During this time, James additionally became associated with the Soul Victors for Christ, a teacher bunch made by his teen companion Jesse Jimerson Phillips. This gathering settled at Chicago's more prominent Reap Baptist Church and included eminent individuals like Richard D. Hennon. The experience additionally hardened James's obligation to gospel music and his confidence, yet it wasn't all going great. James confronted a huge mishap when he stressed his vocal lines while singing with a nearby gathering. This injury gave him the particular gritty voice that would later turn into his trademark, as opposed to seeing it as a block. James embraced his new voice, utilizing it to add profundity and feeling to his exhibitions as they ascended to popularity by 1950. James Cleveland was prepared to surprise the gospel world. He joined the gospel heirs with a unique triplet driven by Norales Mckisich and Bessie People. This gathering was tied in with modernizing customary gospel tunes. Cleveland's plans of works of art, like Give Me That Old Time Religion and It's Me, O oh Master, revived these melodies, yet the gospel heirs didn't keep going long when the threesome disbanded. 
Cleveland wound up working with Roberta Martin, one of his initial symbols, who employed him as an author and an officer. His version of the spirit stirrer melody, the adoration for God supported by the voices of Sanctuary from Detroit, was a hit, acquiring him a record contract that would change his life perpetually defining moment in 1962. Cleveland endorsed with Sevoy Records a noteworthy jazz name. This organization delivered a tremendous inventory of soul gospel accounts, many caught live in show settings. Reverend Lawrence Roberts, minister of the Principal Baptist Church in Nutley, New Jersey, likes encapsulating love live on record. Cleveland and the saintly ensemble of Nutley delivered a few collections together, including the famous Harmony Be Still in September 1963. This collection sold a large number of duplicates and acquired Cleveland's most memorable gold collection, remaining on the board graphs for north of 15 years. Cleveland then moved to Los Angeles to become clergyman of music at Beauty Remembrance Church of God in Christ. Here he worked with keyboardist Billy Preston and the celestial ensemble of Nutley, New Jersey. Further supporting his prominence, he framed the James Cleveland vocalists, which included Odessa McCastle Georgia White, Eugene Bryant and Billy Preston by 1965. Cleveland's gathering included Clyde Brown and Charles Barnett, and they started visiting widely all through the U.S. and abroad. Their exhibitions in significant scenes were exceptionally guessed. This cooperation created accounts like Paradise that will be sufficient for me two wings and the ruler is favoring me, right now throughout the long term. Other skilled vocalists joined the Cleveland vocalists, including Marva Hines and the prestigious soprano soloist Cleo Kennedy. They were the backbones in the gathering until Cleveland kicked the bucket. Southern California people group ensemble, he exploited his developing acclaim by establishing the Southern California people group ensemble SEC, a move that would additionally solidify his heritage. The ensemble turned into a force to be reckoned with in the gospel world, and in 1975, Cleveland at last won his most memorable Grammy grant with SEC for the 1974 collection in the ghetto. This was a gigantic achievement, denoting the start of a line of fruitful, coordinated efforts with the ensemble from 1970 to 1990. Cleveland and the SEC delivered a few collections with the 1979 delivery it Another Day, highlighting the hit God as being one of their best. Another champion was their 1981 collection Where Is Your Confidence, which cemented the ensemble's standing in the gospel music scene. Cleveland's last Grammy came posthumous Lou in 1991 for the collection Having Church, including his famous version of Train Hawkins' What Will I Do in November 1970. Cleveland made a huge stride by establishing Foundation Institutional Baptist Church in Los Angeles. The congregation began little yet under Cleveland's authority. It developed to a huge number of individuals. His most memorable collection with the Congregation Ensemble, The Voices of Foundation, was delivered in 1980. This collection included paramount tracks like Jesus Admirer of My Spirit and A Supplicating Soul, composed by Elbernita Twinkie Clark and promoted by the Clark Sisters. My Assumptions delivered in 1981 additionally earned consideration for uniting ability. Cleveland didn't simply zero in on his own ensemble. He was instrumental in uniting and supporting various gospel craftsmen. He worked with bunches like the Donald Shroud Corers, the Harold Smith Majestics, the Los Angeles Gospel Couriers, and the New Jerusalem Baptist Church Ensemble. These coordinated efforts delivered ageless hits like Master Assist Me With Waiting and I Don't Feel Any Ways Tired. The James Cleveland artists additionally saw a few cycles and options throughout the long term, beginning in 1964. The gathering included individuals like Odessa Massel and Roger Roberts. By 1965, Clyde Brown and Charles Barnett had joined, and the gathering's broad visits carried their music to crowds across the U.S. and past. They recorded hits, for example, Paradise That Will Be Sufficient For Me, Two Wings, and The Master Is Favoring Me Right. Currently, Cleveland's coordinated efforts stretched out past gospel craftsmen. He supported notable figures like Arthur Franklin Beam Charles and Elton John in his work with Arthur on her 1972 collection.